Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my easy cooking channel tonight. I know many of you have missed me for quite some time. I haven't been doing videos. And what happened was I took some time off. Okay, I took about two or three months off to um, live. And then I got a wild hair and I decided to sell my home. And I ended up packing everything up. There's nothing in the house except furniture. My pantry is empty. My stove's barely set up to cook. I've been living out of a frying pan and paper plates. And um, I packed everything up and I've been on the market for about three months, nothing was happening. And right now it's holiday time, so the house is off the market. This is why I've been gone for such a long time. It's a terrible time to sell a house during the holiday season. But as time was going by and I've been off, I was helping out one of my viewers in China. And I was showing him how to sharpen a cleaver. Okay, he didn't even know what kind of cleaver he had. He sent me pictures and I gave him advice on how to sharpen and where to get the proper uh, plates and so forth, diamonds like I use, to sharpen. And it turned out that the cleaver he actually had was one from his country. Okay, a Chinese cleaver, a kai dao. Okay, this is called a kai dao or chukabocho in Japanese. Okay, and he told me after I helped him, you ought to do a cleaver sharpening video. And I sat around on my duff going, you know what? It's about time I do another sharpening video because many of us out there have Chinese vegetable cleavers such as this, a kai dao, kai dao. And that is what I'm going to sharpen for you today. This is how to sharpen a kai dao, a Chinese cleaver. So as usual with YouTube, unlimited minutes, let's get going and I'll see you on the other side. Okay guys, now because this kai dao is very dull, I'm going to start at a 220 grit mesh on my DMT 8 inch plates. So hold on a second, I'm going to set it up and we'll get going. This is my setup. This is a 220 grit, 220 mesh DMT diamond plate. Okay, I have it set up for the western stroke. I do want to say that I've seen other people sharpen these cleavers online. Okay, like this. And they take their Japanese water stone, or their Arkansas stone, or an India stone, or a crystalline stone, and I saw them sharpening the cleaver this way. Okay. Now, mind you, this will work, okay? This will sharpen the cleaver, but it'll also accomplish cutting a route right into your stone and taking your Japanese synthetic ceramic water stone, okay, and taking it off level. It'll take your India stone, your crystalline stone, your Arkansas stone off level, grinding the blade like this on each side. It'll take your stone out of balance. That is not how it's supposed to be done. Okay, it's a great time saver, but it kills your stones. Okay, this way, right there, this way. And what we're gonna do is, you're gonna lay this cleaver and start here. Remember, you wanna use your real estate. Okay, that's all. Western stroke. Okay, that is what I'm going to do to this cleaver to establish a brand new edge and then we're going to move on to 325 grit mesh to refine the scratches from the 220. So I'm going to continue on from here because I'm going to make this puppy razor, razor sharp. And I'll see you in a few minutes. Remember, let the abrasive do the work. You don't have to use tons and tons of pressure because, as I've explained in the past, Diamonds are much harder than any steel you could ply to them. So let the abrasive do the work for you. I will say that as you bring an edge down and you reach that sweet spot, it's a particular feeling that's very difficult to explain. But once the grind has been accomplished, the angle, you will feel the tool that you are sharpening, your knife, your cleaver, grip the stone in a particular way. It just fits right in there. It's a sweet spot. Then you can back off on the pressure a little bit to refine the edge. So I'm gonna keep going on this for a couple more minutes and then we move on to the next grit mesh. Nice, even strokes. Nice, even strokes. I finished using the 220 grit 220 mesh. Okay, I don't know if you can see the edge, but it has been started. And I'm going to move on to the 325 grit 
mesh, okay, I could move right to the 600 if I wanted to, but I figured I'd spend a minute or two uh, on the 325 grit mesh, just refining some of the scratches from the 220 grit mesh, and then I'll move to the 600. I'm just a stickler that way. You don't really need to. If you use the same kind of plates that I use, you could have jumped right to the 600 from the 220. Uh, but I'm going to the 325 for a few strokes just to take out some scratches. You can hear how it glides smoother with a lot less noise than on the 220 because the 220 broke it down, made each side cross to center, and now the 325 is just going to do some refining and then I'm going to move to the 600. Watch your pressure on the higher grits. You don't need to press so hard because the lower grits are the grits that created your angle. You maintain the angle on the higher grits, refining the scratches, polishing them out, and the sharper the blade gets. Watch your pressure. Nice, even strokes. And I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Now it's time to move on to the 600 grit, 600 mesh DMT diamond plate. All right, I gave about three minutes on the 325, now we're moving to the 600. And you'll notice I'm using the plates dry. And that's because I'm not using them long enough to wet them. So we're going to set the kite out on the 600 and apply light pressure and let it smoothly glide over the 600 grit, 600 mesh DMT plate. I've had people contacting me saying that they've seen reviews of where people claim that the abrasive, the diamonds, come off of these DMT plates. And I must tell you, they are wrong. I have been using DMT plates for almost 20 years. I have a 6 inch set, I have an 8 inch set, I have a 10 inch set, I have the 4000 and I have the 8000 grit specialty plates. All right. I'm still using my 6 inch plates on my pocket knives. That's my oldest set, 16, like about 16 years. And those abrasives had not come out. If you use the plates correctly and keep them clean, they never wear out. Because as I said, diamond is harder than any steel you could put to them. So right now I'm going to spend 2 or 3 minutes at 600 grit, 600 mesh with this DMT plate. And once again I must say the reason I use diamonds is they never go out of level. You never have to worry about taking a plate to them and correcting them or re-leveling them as you do with the synthetic Japanese water stones. That's why they're such a better value in my opinion. People argue with me and over the years I've proven them wrong every time. As far as I'm concerned from manual sharpening the DMT diamond plates are the finest medium out there. So I said two or three minutes on the 600, then I'm going to move to 1200, and then I'm going to go to 2200, and then I think I'm going to go to about 4000 and show you the end result, which is going to be a very sharp kaidao, or Chinese cleaver. So I will see you in a little bit. Just remember, nice even strokes, watch the pressure, watch the pressure, nice even strokes. Okay guys, so now I'm going to get to work on the 1200 grit. Now watching this video, it might seem like we're taking a long time, but matter of factly, from dull, this cleaver is only going to be taking, oh, 15 minutes or so to sharpen up on these diamonds. So let's get going. I'm on 1200 grit. All right, so I don't know if you can see the edge, how polished it's becoming, but right now, I'm going to the 1200 grit, grit mesh, DMT plate, 1200 grit, light strokes, the 1200 will refine the scratches from the 600. This is where the polishing and refining really starts to kick in at 1200 and then I'm going to move to 2200, all right? Nice and smooth. Listen for the sound. 
nice and smooth. If it sounds gritty or shaky, then something's wrong in your angle. Inconsistent pressure. You just want to hear nice and smooth. Cover the real estate. Use the real estate of the abrasive. So I'm going to spend two or three minutes here. And then it's on to my trusty Spyderco 2200 grit synthetic ceramic block. This is my Spyderco ultra fine synthetic ceramic block. It is roughly a 2200 grit polishing stone and that is what I'm going to do right now. Light strokes and I'm going to polish up scratches from the 1200 on this 2200 grit ultra fine ceramic. Light strokes, light strokes, nothing heavy needed. Put a nice mirror polish. I'll move it right back to the edge here. Put a nice mirror polish on the edge of this Kaidao, Chinese cleaver. I'm going to spend about a minute or two doing this. And then I'm going to move on to my black surgical translucent Arkansas stone, which is roughly a 4,000. And that's generally where I stop with most of my edges. This is about 4,000. A lot of people I know get really nutty. They want 8,000, 10,000. I've got guys asking me for 15, 20,000 grit apparatus at the store. I just don't carry that stuff. That's a bunch of kitchen tactic queer dudes, and I'm just, I'm just not into that. Okay, 4,000 is good. On my sashimi knives, I'll go to 8,000. But on my everyday knives and pocket knives, eh, you know, I'll do between two and 4,000 on an EDC, although I do have a pocket 8,000 if I wanted to do sashimi in the field, but I don't. So I'll be finishing this puppy, this Kaidao, Chinese cleaver, on a 4,000. And then I'm gonna use it to chop up some veggies for my dinner. I gotta find some veggies. To me, a vegetable is something that's red and has good marble. But anyway, two or three minutes and I'll be back. Gentle strokes, people. Take your time. Manual sharpening is an art. You can buy all kinds of gadgets that'll align your blades for you, and they're good and they work great. But manual sharpening on the stones is an art form. You've seen me use it before. Last but not least, well, this is the last, my black translucent Arkansas. I use water, not oil. Uh, I know a lot of you guys don't like to watch me test the sharpness on my fingernails when I chisel my fingernails or when I shave my arm to test the sharpness. And just to let you know, there it is. I do get hit, okay? There's no more hair on the arm. And yes, I did cut myself, and that's par for the course. I mean, when you play with knives, you're gonna get cut. That's just the way it's gonna be. So here it is, my 4,000 grit. I'm gonna work this for a few minutes, two or three, nice and slow, really nice and slow. Put that final razor edge on this cleaver. To tell you the truth, I could have stopped at 1200. It was ready to go at 1200. I could have done meat without the bone, veg, I could have done anything at the 1200. But I'm taking it up all this way. It's gonna have a very thin edge it won't last very long because it is so thin. But about two minutes on this, and then it's time to make dinner. Do a couple of paper cuts. Like I said, you guys don't like watching me do my nail. Definitely, you don't want to see me open up my skin. That one, that's actually pretty deep. But anyway, light strokes, 4,000 grit, black translucent Arkansas, no vaculite. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. So, my Kaidao is finished. My Chinese cleaver is finished. And like I told you, I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, 
I cut myself pretty good. You know, I'm bleeding a little bit, but that's okay. Part of the game. So, what we do, look at this. Okay. Paper feathers. Okay. Is it sharp? Oh, my God. Is it sharp? My God. I wouldn't want to be in the way of this cleaver. Okay. All right. Is it sharp? Yeah. It'll do veg. Okay. It'll do meat. It'll do anything you want it to do. Okay. It only took me about 15, 20 minutes tops because it was dead dull. Okay. It was it dead dull. Right. Okay. There we go. Wonderful. Sharp. 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 Kaido. Chinese cleaver. Sharp. 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 What more can I say? Ta-da. 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 I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hey guys, this is Richard Blaine, Mr. Easy Cooking. I want to thank you for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. I know I've, got, I've been away for a long time and I apologize, but now I'm back. I'm going to start doing videos at least once a week. I'm going to get going with the cooking again. I've got some Japanese recipes coming up because once again, people have been sending in requests. Hey, you've done Thai, you've done Malaysian, you've done Filipino, but it's been a long time since you've done anything Japanese. So I've got some nice, easy, simple, but really delicious Japanese recipes coming up. I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Take care.